Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. How you brewing? I know I can't overuse that, but it is definitely one of my favorite ways to greet my guests who are joining me from the Big Apple NYC. And that is where my next guest hangs his hat when he isn't gallivanting all over the world and this country reporting on stories for the Wall Street Journal. But more on Jason Bellini in a moment. First, I want to make sure you've all signed up for the Java Junkies Journal. That's our weekly newsletter that we send out bright and early or maybe mid-morning on Mondays, to give you the inside track on the five episodes we're going to be dropping that week. Otherwise, you won't know until the day of whose episode is dropping. So even if you're subscribed, it is a great way to preview whose episodes you're definitely going to want to binge on during your morning commutes to class or work or whatever. Just head on over to the Time for Coffee website at time, the number four, coffee.org and sign up. Now, my friends, grab your mug and take a chug of a delicious caffeinated beverage because it's time for another caffeinated career conversation. And my guest is Jason Bellini, a badass video reporter and senior producer at the Wall Street Journal. Jason has 20 years of experience as a journalist working for CNN, MTV, CBS News, Bloomberg TV, and on and on. Jason has received numerous awards, including the 2006 Journalist of the Year Award from the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association. Most recently, Jason is the host and producer of a video series called Moving Upstream, in which he explores the trends, technologies, ideas, and challenges that are headed our way. In each episode, they visit the places and meet the people who can help us to better understand what's upstream. Jason, welcome to Time for Coffee, my friend. Are you caffeinated and ready to go? Andrea, indeed I am. Thank you. It's great to be with you. I have to ask you, how you brewing? How am I brewing? I'm brewing all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my first cup, so there's uh, there's some caffeination ahead for me still. The guy that's right outside the office who knows exactly what I want. Year-round, my iced coffee with that hazelnut creamer in it. You are an iced coffee drinker year-round. Year round. Year round, well, actually, and, and also, I like to, I kind of stay on the trends. I'm, I'm a sucker for a trend in marketing. And so, the cold brew, I've been drinking that a lot lately, too. Okay. Well, that's, you know, it's kind of like the Americana, right, of iced coffee. All I know is when it's cold, it goes straight to your veins. <laughs> <laughs> You get that double whammy. Yes. So, Jason, we are going to jump right into the espresso shots with the first question. What entry-level jobs are available to Java junkies who want to break into journalism? Who want to break into journalism? Well, first thing I'd say is make sure you really want to break into journalism. If you're an intern, you get an internship in a news organization, that's a great idea because the most valuable internships, I think, for people in journalism are one where they walk away and they say, this ain't for me. I mean, mm. people, I, I've met many interns who've said, I'm not sure this is right for me. I was like, then you spent your time wisely. You've crossed this one off the list because you got to love it if you want to live it. This is a rough and tumble profession, has its ups and downs, and you're not going to make as much money as your peers, and you're going to be working harder than them most likely. But it's got its rewards. But in terms of entry-level jobs, I think that it's tough breaking in. And so you, I started out entry entry level at cnn actually right after college i was it was called an operations assistant and i was rolling the teleprompter running scripts to people on set the kinds of jobs that we have are are kind of a, at the journal some of them are kind of a, a, akin to that they're you know very junior level where you don't aren't making a lot of decisions you're not necessarily writing that's where we have some internships paid internships that are very competitive and a lot of those reporters they're treated as reporters as interns they get published in the paper under a byline um, wow they go on to get jobs. Yeah. If you can get one of those, you're golden. That is a that is really a rich opportunity. In terms of video, which is my area, a lot of people come in as junior level producers. And so you'll be 
cutting clips of Trump press conference, the latest this, the latest that. But you're, you're starting to gain skills. But my, my feeling on entry level jobs is what I tell people is just if you find an organization that you're excited about, get in the door. And you know what? Whatever it is that you're doing, people are going to be watching you. And that's, I think, one of the big lessons from my entire career has been people are always watching you. How you do even the little things and how well you do them and how thorough you do them. And a lot of people, forgive me for saying this, but there are a lot of dumbasses out there. You know, <laughs> people who are lazy. A lot of lazy people are lazy. And I know I've worked with them. And, and you know what? People notice that too. You notice that real fast. And so oh, yeah. you... If you're a hard worker and you're, you know, you're paying attention to details, if you're not messing up too much, people will be like, okay, let's, this, this person has potential and you'll get more opportunities. And I mean, you can, you can grow fast if you just show up and do a great job. And that was clearly you, Jason. So <laughs> one of many, many reasons that I wanted to make sure to tap into your expertise for Java junkies. Jason, what, in your opinion, is a useful skill or skills that you look for in the people that you hire, whether at the Wall Street Journal or in the other places that you've worked? Resourcefulness. That's the number one thing. And it's a hard thing to assess in interviews. And that's why before hiring anyone, I've learned the hard way. You got to call up people's references and you try to suss out whether they're resourceful, whether you give them something to do. And if they don't know how to do it, they'll figure it out or they'll ask. And to me, that means if I say to someone, all right, we need to find out, we need to fact check this. Well, they'll know to go, you know, they'll, they'll start making calls. They'll start figuring out how you, you know, you get this information. And a lot of people will just sort of take it the easy way. They won't go the extra mile. So if, I'd say if you approach any kind of job and you go in there and think, all right, I'm going to figure it out one way or another, and I'm going to make things easier on the people with whom I'm working. That's the key. Yeah. Another way of putting it, they're a self-starter. <laughs> <laughs> a self-starter, right. I, I'd agree with that. Jason, do you think someone's major is a deciding factor to break into journalism? No, not at all. Now, I didn't study journalism myself, and that was a calculated move. In fact, I started studying journalism as a freshman. I went to, uh, started at Medill School of Journalism, and I did an internship. And the advice I was getting from people was that, you know, a journalism degree, that's all good and nice. But what we're more interested in at the higher level, at the, at the national level, is people who are good thinkers. And if you have a degree in a liberal arts, that can be looked upon more favorably, which is not to say that it really matters that much when you're talking about your undergraduate degree. I think that people are more intriguing when they have degrees that are unconventional for entering the profession. This would not even be considered unconventional anymore. If you have a data science background, mm. that's hot right now. If you're able to do data journalism, there's a real demand for people who are able to actually take data from the various sources, from government databases, and be able to, I, I don't know how to do it myself, honestly, but to be yeah, integrating them onto Excel spreadsheets and be able to do discovery through data. That's huge. Uh, I studied history, and that I don't regret at all. I think that has been a fantastic background for me. It was about getting a, a better understanding of this world, building my perspective, and becoming a better writer and clearer thinker. Yeah, for sure. And so what about a grad school degree? And less so to break into the field, more so to succeed and to have a job like yours where you're doing the kinds of stories that you really want to be doing and you're able to tell them in a way that you find stimulating and exciting. Well, here's my thought on that. One, I and people always give the advice that worked for them. So recognize that bias as, as it's coming from me. I didn't go to graduate school. I felt like I was at the graduate school of life. And I was, to me, my job was like graduate school because I was working with great editors, people who were critiquing my work, critiquing my writing. And I feel like if you're going to journalism school, that's what you're paying for more than anything else is someone who's going to look at your work and who's going to be the doctor that is able to diagnose what's wrong with your script or how to improve it or how to restructure it, that kind of thing. But if you have a way of getting that on the job, well, you've saved yourself a lot of money. Now, that said, 
I could see going to a graduate program for international studies for if you wanted to have expertise in a particular area of science, something along those lines. I think that could definitely benefit you and, and add to your credentials. I look at the credentials of some of the people that I'm proud to call my colleagues at the journal. And I mean, these are some high caliber folks. I remember I was looking at the, the intro to the new bureau chief. I think it was like the, the new Moscow bureau chief. And he had a master's in Russian literature. And I was like, wow, that's that's impressive. It, it, it's more interesting, I think, than hearing that someone has a journalism degree. And again, this is not to knock the graduate journalism programs. I have a number of friends, peers who've gone to Columbia, who've gone to other programs, and who feel like they've gained a lot from them. I guess what I'm saying is it may not be necessary to get that kind of a graduate degree in journalism if you're able to get that experience on the job. Yeah, that is great insight. Thank you, Jason. What kind of life experiences do you think are most useful for someone starting out in this field? Well, that's a tough question. What kinds of life experiences? Well, I think um, the life experiences in general, having many of them in terms of if you've taken time to travel and off the advice based on my own experience and what worked for me. I took some time off of college and I just went traveling, backpacking on my own. And for me, that was beneficial in the sense that it made me kind of fearless. I was able to sort of survive without much money and, and travel around the world and just survive on my own you know, resourcefulness, that word again. And it gave me confidence that I can go out there and I can take risks and I can go anywhere and I'll be, I'll figure it out. That's what I was able to <laughs> think to myself in taking some time and just getting outside of school and getting outside of kind of the the nest of academia and then trying to just sort of meet lots of different people and from different walks of life. I mean, I think if you're talking about career in journalism, the more exposure you've had to people in all kinds of walks of life. And if you can be, I think some of the best journalists are often chameleons. You're able to blend in with lots of different groups. You're able to relate to lots of different people because ultimately a large part of journalism is seduction. Mm. You're meeting people and your maybe that's too strong a word or, or not or not a polite enough word that you're trying to we don't have to be polite you. <laughs> well you want people to you want to connect with people uh, yeah. from all walks of life and have them trust you and want to share their story with you or share secrets with you journalism is it's sometimes said is something that someone somewhere doesn't want you to know and getting to those things that's about human relationships I was hearing seduction in a very magical way. That was the way that that I took it. There is something about convincing people to trust you, to share whatever those moments are that perhaps they would prefer others not know about. And then you're saying, I want to share it with everybody. <laughs> well, so, and also there's some things you can't fake. I think that being a genuinely empathetic person, I think that is often part of the seduction is yes. that for people is that they can tell where your heart is. And I don't know any formula for developing that other than to be out in the world and see pain that people experience and see how the difficulties that others have experienced. If you've come from a more privileged background, I was, you know, came from a more middle class background in America, but by going out and by just making friends with, not just going as a tourist, but going and getting to know people whose life experience has been very different from yours, maybe more difficult in many ways from yours. I think that helps shape you as a person and shape you as a journalist. Yes. And I can't wait to talk with you about your year off during school, during the main time for coffee interviews. So I have just made a note to self. Jason, what for you is the best part of being a journalist? The best part. Wow, that's a tough one. I think or I'm actually not that so tough. The best part is that you have a license, not a formal one, but you basically got a license to call some of the smartest people in the world on whatever topic it is that you're focused in on or your is your beat or that you're reporting on. You get to call them and you get to have time with them. They make time for you. And that is such a privilege to be able to not just read what they have to say. To me, there's something very different in just talking and having exchange with someone, having someone explain something to you, someone at a very high level. That's gratifying. And it's also like how I end up getting to really feeling like I know this subject 
much better than I would otherwise is by just talking it through. It's all about talking it through. And so the advice I'm often given to my peers is don't just read, get on the phone, call somebody. And that's where you can tease out ideas. That's where you can find out things that aren't already out there. Because uh, I consider journalism a hunt for hunt for things that are new or things that are underknown. Is that a mm. word underknown or underappreciated? We just, or under- we, you just coined it. <laughs> under, under, yeah, the, I'm looking for the underknowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the next Wall Street Journal series. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think I'll embarrass myself if I were to use that word in print. But at any rate, but you know what I mean? That's because you're on a hunt. It's a scavenger hunt. And so that's how I treat this job is I'm looking, I'm trying to find something out. And what about the flip side of that? What is the part of your current job, Jason, that sucks the most? That sucks the most. I'd say so the flip side of the coin of getting to travel to lots of places is that you're not home. Your life is topsy turvy. I haven't seen my dogs in three weeks. They're with my ex. We share them. We have joint custody amicably, and it works wonderfully. But I miss them terribly. And uh, there are a lot of friends who are out. I see on Facebook. I see on uh, Instagram. They're out having fun, and so it's not fear of missing out. I'm missing out. I'm missing out on, on time with my my buddies. And so you know, you, you can't be in two places at once unfortunately. And so that's the part that sucks. And then I don't say it sucks. It's just, you know, it is what it is. I hate that expression. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I see that there's the sacrifices, you know, the sacrifices are, are difficult that, that you make and that your brain is always on your brain is always on the story. And it's hard to kind of relax sometimes and get out of thinking about the project. If you've got multiple stories you're working on me thinking about, Oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that. Oh, uh, this would work there. And just, chill out. That's that's the challenge, at least for me. Mm, Yeah. I can't tell you how many birthdays, family, gatherings, friends, special occasions I missed over the years. And it does get to you. It really does. I mean, you have to. I think this gets back to what you said early on, and that is you better make sure that this is something you really want to do. But I love it because you're going to live it to do it right. For sure. So, Jason, what is the best career advice you've ever gotten? Best career advice I've ever gotten? Well, maybe it comes down to a phrase that I heard someone say once, someone shout into a phone. <laughs> you ready for this one? I'm ready. Actually, all right. And it's actually probably someone you know who I'll, I'll tell you later who wants to do this. Shout it into the phone. Don't tell me about the pain. Show me the baby. I'm like, oh, that was kind of a good experience. I know exactly what he means. By that. I took that as my mantra. That is vivid. However offensive that may sound. Exactly. So we're getting down to the bottom of the espresso shots here. Here's the second to last one. What movies, Jason, or Netflix, Amazon, Hulu shows, or fiction books do you think accurately depict this profession? Oh, there's uh, that's that's an easy one. Broadcast news, the classic from the '80s. Hmm. That one nailed it. You, you've seen it, right? Oh, sure, many times. Many times. That I think captured it. And actually, I had the privilege of meeting Susan Zarinsky, and she's the executive producer at CBS News of 48 Hours. The main character was it Jane? Her she was mm-hmm. based on her and her experience, and in life, real life. She's the same firecracker she was portrayed as on that show. Great. We will include that in show notes for sure. Final espresso shot, Jason. What do you think Java junkies would be surprised to learn about the profession of journalism? I think that unless you're in it, you don't really recognize just the camaraderie that journalists have and I love hanging out with other journalists and I mean that's one of the things that convinced me to, that I wanted to pursue this as my life career is you meet some people who are curious and fascinating and who are great storytellers that if you're part of the club you get to hang out with other journalists and that's a great privilege I find absolutely and again one of the many reasons that I wanted to have the opportunity to have coffee with you today Jason because you are such a gifted storyteller thank you you. so much 
for making time for coffee with me and the Java Junkie community today. You are such a talented young man, and I can still say you're a young man because you are significantly younger than I am. Not as young as I used to be. None of us are. But thank you so much. This is really kind of you to invite me. And can I tell you one more thing real quickly? Yeah. Um, I listened to your first podcast, and so I was listening to them, and I've known you for a long time. And I thought, oh, I kind of, I would be neat if to be invited to be as a guest on this. And I was like, oh, maybe I should email her. And then I was like, no, that's wildly presumptuous. Don't do that. And so when you reached out to me, I was really delighted and felt really honored. Oh, well, I am just thrilled that you have been able to make the time. And again, I know Java junkies are going to get so much out of getting to listen to both the espresso shots and the main interview. So thank you again, Jason. My pleasure. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.